Hello YouTube, we're live and alive. Kaskar here and today we're going to take a tour of the Iron Mountain Iron Mines in located in Vulcan, Michigan. Um, if you've never seen the place, it's it's truly an amazing um, 45 minute adventure that we'll be taking. Um, looking at the history, um, how iron mining in Iron Mountain, Michigan area started and uh, more importantly, a look into the lives of those people that really didn't have very long life expectancy and really did um, sell their souls to the company store as, as the song uh, quotes. So um, everyone enjoy and we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> oh, that's right, you got that thing going. <laughs> <laughs> kids on school buses that were here two tours oh wow that's so awesome. we just missed them luckily <laughs> oh that's one thing i was kind of like uh, yeah. during the week kids are in school will you take our picture yeah we'll take over to hills yeah as long as you guys have it all set up Aww. thank you properly yeah. document thank you <laughs> Device. The best thing device is a kid on the What? Oh. Yeah. Alright, welcome to the Air Mountain Iron Mine, everybody. My name is Chris. I will be your guide for the next 35 minutes or so. How's everybody doing? Good, Good. you? Good. Alright, 1837, Michigan applied for statehood. They sent people here from Washington, D.C. Surveyors are up on this very hill looking around. They noticed a big red pine had been pushed over by a recent storm. The root system on that tree was kind of a rust color. They had never seen that before. So they grabbed the soil sample. They sent it back to Washington to come to find out this ground is very rich in iron ore. Now, I like to think of the UP as two halves. You got a copper half and you got an iron half. You go northwest of here, they call that the copper country. Started digging for copper up around the Keweenaw in 1845. They started digging here in 1870. They did so for seven years, exploring to see what was here. At the end of that seven year period, they found the two stopes, which we are going to see today. Shortly after that, they found the main mine. That's across the street. It's 13 levels, 1,327 feet deep. It's full of water because they don't pump it out anymore. Uh, trees have grown up over it. You can't even really see where it is, but you can get there from the stopes. And I'll explain that when we get underground. Now, the mine was operational for 78 years till 1945. In 1945, World War II ended. When that happened, the price of iron ore went from 40 to $20 a ton. The market crashed. Within two weeks, every mine in the UP was shut down. Thousands of people was out of work when that happened. Now, to my right here, this is an underground loader. It weighs one ton. Holds this train car. Weighs one ton empty. Holds four tons of iron ore. And as you can see, it's counterbalanced. That means it tips easy. One person can tip this over. You would fully load it. That way, it would free up other miners to do other jobs. This runs, it's a little out of everybody. Now, that would have went all the way over into the dump car, and this would have ran off pressurized air made from steam. This was before electricity came into the mine. Now everything you see here came out of this mine or mine in this area. They left everything behind for two simple reasons. 
There's no place to take it. The mines were closing, and it would have cost money. Uh, mine owners would have spent one nickel to take this stuff anyway. They just left it, which is really cool. I get to show it to you. You get to see it. Because by all rights, this stuff should have been melted down over 100 years ago. And something else. All right. Uh, we're going to slide ahead to this map. And I'm going to show you kind of where we're going today. I'm going to walk along, I'll explain a few things, we get to the end. We're going to get on that train and we're going to go 970 feet in that direction. We're not going down, we're going sideways. The hill's going up. When we get off the train, we're going to be between two and 300 feet underground. We're going to walk and visit two stopes. Stope, it's an English word. It means underground mined out cavity. First stope to swallow it. Four million tons of iron ore came out of the small stove. Second one's the big one. Twenty-three million tons of iron ore came out of there. Now keep in mind, this is solid rock where we're going. They had to dig, blast, and scratch every inch of it to get it out of there. And if you haven't been here before, this stove here is really something to see. I promise you, you're going to be amazed by it. Has anybody been here before? No. Nope. Nope. You're in for a real treat. <laughs> this here, this is all the hand tools they had to work with before electricity came into the line. Rate of progress with these tools was 1 to 13 inches a day. Keep that in mind, 1 to 13 inches a day. What they would do is drill 13 holes, 4 feet deep, pack it with dynamite, blast it onto the floor, and then they would drive in with that machine right there I just showed you and scoop it into that trailer. That machine was replaced with this machine once electricity came into the mine. This is the electric locomotive. This would have pulled six train cars, approximately 24 tons of iron ore. The problem with this machine, everybody, is this wire up here that we up to. That's a live wire. We get underground, it would have been right here, just above your head. You had to be very careful where you were at all times around that wire. If you came into contact with it in any way, it would have killed you on the spot. 2,300 watts of electricity went through that wire. Now these two rocks here on the floor, these are speculative hematite. They came off the 13th level of the mine. When they found these two and thousands more just like them, they made this mine a lot of money. Not the miners. The miners made 11 to 18 cents an hour. That coots to about minimum wage today. The rock on the right, 80% iron ore weighs 400 pounds. Last week, I had six half drunk truck drivers show up here at closing time. They wanted to go through. They were driving by here all day long. And one of them was like, that don't weigh 400 pounds. He jumped over the fence, <laughs> tried to move it. He couldn't move it. And I got quite a lot of enjoyment out of that. Watch him. <laughs> <laughs> because he was convinced he was going to move that. Nope. All right. Now this here, this is a miner's whistle, also known as a warning whistle. This blew three times a day. It was so accurate, the people of Vulcan kept their watches by it. It went off at 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. If you heard this whistle any other time of day, it meant something very wrong happened up here. When that happened, everybody in town would come running up that hill right there to see if they could help. Even if they didn't work here, it was a pretty tight community back in the day. Anybody want to pull it? I pull it all the time. It ain't nothing for me. Let's go down. That's the actual whistle. You can see it right here. When this breaks, we have to make the part because you can't find it. Look behind it on the floor. Everybody see the pipe? Yeah. Goes into the mine and into the building. On the mine end of it, there's a fan. On hot days, we turn that fan on. It sucks cold air out of the mine into the building. It's our free air conditioning <laughs> because it's a constant 43 degrees in the mine. It never changes. The reason for that, there's millions of gallons of water where we're going. It's all around us in the rock. The underground water temperature is set at 43 degrees, so it never changes. It could be 90 out here or 30 below. It don't matter in there, 43. And you're gonna feel it as soon as we hit that door. Now this here, this is a diamond drilling machine. How this works, this would have had a diamond tip on the end of it. Water would have been pushed through to keep it cool. Otherwise, this casing would have melted. That's how hot it would have got. Hooked on to 10 foot sections of pipe. You could run this up to 100 feet in the ground. It's just rainwater on that. Um, that core would have to be at least 50% iron ore to be profitable. If it wasn't, they wouldn't dig there. And they pulled this around on a dray with donkeys all over the place digging holes. This drastically sped up the process of finding <laughs> iron ore. This still runs. This is 130 years old.
This is amazing. 130 years old. The only thing it missing is a couple ball bearings. Other than that, we don't even cover this in the winter. They used to make things to last in this country. They used to. <laughs> I was just going to say the engineering is just yeah. not like it used to be. No, it isn't. But the will has to be there, too. In the beginning, they thought we're going to make something to last. Now it's like, well, I want you to buy it again in five years, so we're not going to make it to last. All right. All right. This is that rock I just showed you. Both hands don't drop by your foot. Yeah, you can feel the weight in it. It makes you appreciate how heavy. Wow. Wow. It means more when you can feel it, right? So that's like 80% iron? 80%. Well, <laughs> all right, guys, follow me up here to the front. We'll have a seat on the front. We're going to go inside. Crazy. Couples can have your own cart or you can sit in one. I don't really care. <laughs> They're a big fan. things everybody please keep your hands and feet inside the yellow do not stand up for any reason if you lean forward or backwards put a hand on your helmet so it don't fall off if it gets under the train it can actually disrail the train if you're going to use your phone to take a picture take as many pictures as you want but on the train keep it close to you okay don't do this <laughs> it's going to get knocked out of your hand i'm going to run over i've run over two phones this year well i do have insurance on All right, now I, had, I had 40 kids here earlier today and I always ask, is everybody ready to have a good time? Oh, yeah. Uh, of course. Well, that ain't what I've been hearing all day long. Usually they're screaming back at me. But, <laughs> all right, here we go, guys.
sledgehammers. They would take turns hitting this. Every time one of them hit it, you get a quarter turn. They hit it, quarter turn. What that's doing is sliding into the rock. It's like a drill bit on that. But can you imagine doing that for 12 hours a day? And they didn't have this light. They had candlelight. I'm going to show you that as the next stove. Now, behind me, this is a water liner drill done by Frank Liner. This come out in 1900. Evolutionary step in the mining industry. This goes to one to two feet of rock an hour rather than one to 13 inches a day the way I just showed you. The problem with this is it creates dust. You guys heard of black lung? Mm -hmm. To fix that problem, they put a water line on this. Squeeze water in a hole, knock the dust down, got rid of the uh, black lung problem. But it made a new problem. All the water coming out of the holes got no place to go. It would be knee deep in here. People got pneumonia. Pneumonia mm -hmm. or black lung was a death sentence back in the day, you were gonna die. Now you had to be at least 14 to work here. If you started here at 14, you probably didn't live to be 30. That was your life expectancy. Any questions? Mm. No? This way, yes. Any of you guys geologists or want to be? Like that kind of stuff? No. no? I'm metal detector. That's about as close as I get to it. <laughs> I'll just show you something that's pretty cool. I get small groups, so I can go in there. Check this sand out. It's just sand. You can feel it. Sand. It's ocean sand. Whoa. How old do you think that ocean sand is? That's the cool part. Yeah. You got anybody want to guess? 1.8 billion years old. <laughs> that was ocean floor here back then. Wow. Oh, wow. And you can see how it twists up and around. You know, geology, up, up and down, up and down. Yeah. So it's just. I just thought that's cool, and I like to show. Yeah, it is. When it is. Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, I would just bring his food and get it from the other thing and bring it in. He told me how old it Right there, yeah? Oh, yeah. Another wow. one coming up in the back. Now, I'll explain them to you. There's three brook trout in there. We feed them. They can't go any further back than that light. We brought them here. The reason they're here is for the really little kids. They find me boring. So, this keeps them going. <laughs> and that's the story on the fish. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a small stove. Four million tons of iron ore came out of here. Well, That'd be very good. All that iron ore in the water, they would taste pretty bad. Um, remember I mentioned the outside, you can get to the main mine from here? All you gotta do is jump in that creek. It's a quarter of a mile under the highway. I'm gonna warn you before you do that. When you go around that corner, it's completely underwater, very dark, very cold, very deep once you get over there. Now, if you shut your screen off on your phone just for a second, you're really gonna appreciate this next part. If you get scared of the dark, hold somebody's hand. 
I said that, the other, me. I said that the other day, and somebody grabbed my hand. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. It kind of startled me a little bit. That would be, that would be yeah. I had the laugh the whole time. I said, would do that. Put this on your helmet right here. This is your working light. Oh, my. Yeah. Now, when the dynamite went off, it didn't matter where you were. You could be standing here, you could be at the train, the next stop, that's 200 yards from here. Didn't matter. The concussion from that blast would knock us out every time, and you didn't know when it was coming. So let's say you're swinging that mallet, you're going to hit that spike I just showed you, right in the middle of your swing, bang, the dynamite goes off. Out blows the light. Now, if you want to try to hold your hand in front of your face, see if you can see it. Pretty dark, hey guys? Now, <laughs> in, in the beginning, there was 100 miners working here. In 1945, before they shut the doors, there was three shifts working around the clock, 24 hours a day, almost 4,000 people was working between here and across the highway. Wow. Any questions? Now, everything on the ground here was blown down from the ceiling. It wasn't 50%, so they left it. Between here and the next stove, there's millions of dollars of iron ore left in here. It's only got to be 20%. Everything in here is about 20 and the next stove. The thing is, this is a historic site. It's protected. It can't come back in there. So, that's the story on that. All right, guys, if you go back out to the second corner where I turn that light on, I have to follow. Let's go around the corner and stop. Right here. This is a stoper drill. This paid the best money in the mine. It's paid 18 cents an hour. Most dangerous job in the mine. And everybody wanted it because it paid 18 cents an hour. They didn't care how dangerous it was. They wanted the money. Works like an upside down jackhammer. You grab it here by the handles, pull it up into the ceiling. It's banging away, knocking stuff loose. It's coming down. Imagine that 400 pound rock, or for that matter, just the one I handed you, coming down and hitting you. Mm. And on your foot, or even yeah, on your head. They didn't have these back then. They had leather helmets, so they weren't much <laughs> protection. No eye protection, no hearing protection. If you run this machine for more than a couple of years, you're probably close to death. That's how loud this was. Now, this had a nickname. It was called the Widowmaker. Mm. All right, this way. Here's out of 13 holes of a look before they blew it. This is calcium. This comes through, and you've probably seen it on the train ride in the white stuff. Mm -hmm. You'd think it's it's slimy. It's not. It's kind of gritty if you want to feel it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Step right up to the fence. You're gonna want to see when I turn the lights on. 
Now keep in mind, this was solid rock when they came in here. They went straight across. Everybody see that light over there? Yep. They went straight up from there, 300 feet, punched the hole in the surface so there's fresh air being pulled in here for the miners. That's Big John. He's just like the one outside. The one outside's 40 feet tall. This one's only 10 feet tall. Would you believe me if I told you he's two football fields from us? He's 600 feet away. Right. Yes. <gasps> wow. Oh, wow. And that's a good way to put it. Wow. wow. Big stove. 23 million tons of iron ore came out of here. It's 150 feet to the crown. It's 50 feet off the edge to the floor. Everybody look to the right over here by this light. Everybody see that cable? That cable goes to the floor. It goes all the way outside. And outside there's a pump hook to it. And it's sucking the water out of here. Otherwise, this would be full of water. Speaking of the water, it's hitting everybody in the head. That's rain from last July. It took three months to get here through the rock. And it's very clean. It just come through a 300 foot rock filter to hit you in the head. Best drinking water. It's drinking. It's better than what you get out of your tap at home, I guarantee oh, yeah. it. <laughs> now, if you look up here, I'll explain a couple of things. This is where we're standing. Big John. See the ladder tip, everybody. That goes down 25 feet to a three foot wide ledge. And then there's another ladder that goes another 25 feet to the floor. Go down both those ladders, take a hard left. You're going to go about a quarter of a mile through a bunch of rock. You're going to go under the parking lot where your car is, under the highway. You will come to the main shaft of the mine. It's 1,327 feet deep, 13 levels. You can take the Empire State Building, put it in this shaft. You'd have to walk over the edge and look down 20 feet to see the top of that building. That's how deep this is. And when they closed it down, they left everything in there. All the machinery, tools, everything. No place to take it. All the mines are closing. And it would have cost money, and they weren't spending a nickel to take it anywhere. That's why we have so much stuff outside. Now, keep in mind, this is across the highway. This is just to show you it's full of water. This is where you're standing. These are two different places. They kind of melted them together. Do people go and, and down the shaft no. now? Too dangerous. Too dangerous. Too dangerous. Too dangerous. That, and the only way to get there without opening it up is uh, through that other stove. I showed you how, the water, remember? Oh, mm, yeah. yeah. You need scuba. Mm -hmm. A good flashlight that you're sure is not going to go dead, because if it does, you are screwed. Yeah. Oh, that's a good now, when I get smaller groups, I always ask, if you want a picture, I can take one with your phone. This is the best spot to stand if you want one. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can go first. You guys okay, go first. thanks. <laughs> All right. Right there. There we go. All right. Say Big John. Big John. Say Big John again. Big, Big John. John again. <laughs> I think I took three. Every phone's different, though. Okay. Thank oh, you. mine or yours? Probably yours. My camera's been. All right. You can zoom it in. You can see oh, Big yeah, John in the background. Cool. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Right there. He's 10 feet tall? Yes, he is. That, nice. beam, that beam right here is two feet above that. Wow. Oh. Yes. Look at the little All right. Here we go, guys. Say Big John. Big John. Big John. Say Big John again. Big John again. I think I took three. That's okay. Thank you. Well, in case you didn't like one of them. <laughs> It's the distance, the light, and your eyes play a trick on your mind. Mm -hmm. Now, Big John was an actual coal miner, but he was from uh, a miner. He was a coal miner from West Virginia, and that's where he is today. He's buried there. Yeah. You wouldn't want to have been in here three hours ago when I had this full of kids. <laughs> really noisy. Ah! We heard there was kids who were very happy we got here when we did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been something. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll tell you one more thing, then we got to go. Um, there's a lot of ways to get killed here. One of the more interesting ways I heard was from a guy this summer. He was here three months ago. His great-great-grandfather worked here in 1880. He got killed here. How he got killed here is the interesting part. He was working right here. Oh. They forgot he was here. They brought the hoist down. They crushed him. That's how he oh. died. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he told me.
told me that, and I was glad he did, because I can tell people about yeah. how somebody died here. There was yeah. lots of ways. That wire I told you about, imagine working 12 hours, your ass is dragging, you forget about that wire for one second, and you come into contact with mm -hmm. it, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah, the Widowmaker, that killed a few people. Imagine being up here. Now keep in mind, they didn't work on this all at one time. 68 years they were here near digging. Imagine being up there in that crown on wood scaffolding running that Widowmaker. Huh. That sound like fun? Mm -mm. And they probably had two or three of them up there at one time. Ooh. It scales. It, you just gotta think like, what would you know make somebody want this type of job. I get that question all the time, usually from kids. Um, and it's not a dig on you, but I'm just saying. No, no, no. Kids don't understand. Nobody wanted to come yeah, down here. Yeah, of course. If you wanted yeah. to feed your family, and a lot of people had eight, ten kids in the family. Yeah. If you wanted to feed them, this is where you come to fed them. Yeah. And uh, nobody here made any money. Yeah. yeah. They made what was called company script, meaning the company store here in town had your name on a ledger. They would credit your account. If you made a dollar eighty-five, they would credit your account a dollar eighty-five. You go in that store, spend your money on their goods, and they would oh, overcharge wow. you for everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's awful. It's like the steel stuff in Pittsburgh. Yep, it's the same yeah. principle. So unions come in, and that's one of the, I'm not a big union guy, but uh, they actually did good there. They stopped a lot of that stuff yeah. and, and made it fair for people. Because they weren't looking out for the people back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, okay. if you want to follow the light back to the train, i got to go last. Yeah. All right. Powder uh, room. I got a freshen up. Huh? Got a freshen up. There's a powder room. A guy who wanted to win a lot of goods in California. He passed the union. You better watch him. Oh, there's a so widow maker. This channel now is just these floors and mine shafts, and they have the hundreds. Men can be widows too, <laughs> wife. And are still able to use it. Very, very careful. Well, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know how much I want to trust that. It gets stuck at like 700 level. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Exploring. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It, it, it is. Well, it makes you appreciate everything you've got today. It's yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. And they help build this country. Very much so. It hurts my soul to see people today that no longer work for 20 bucks an hour. Think of how people work back then, you know. Sadly, not for 18 cents. Or even when they make twenty dollars an hour and they're afraid to put their back into it. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. The owner and family they got a basket back and forth. And they well, oh, it's it's all over, it isn't just here. They can't find anybody that would show up and work. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's everywhere now. And you finally get people and they they've got a little drug test. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah. Keep going, follow the lights. Yeah, it's just a sign of the times. It's not, it's not them, it's everybody. Everybody is hiring right now. Oh, yeah. Hiring, closing early. Mm hmm. Weird shifts. Yep. Southwest canceled 1,800 flights this week. Yep. Yeah. Sure I'm very glad that's not who we're hooked on. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to Artie's the other day. I was there at 3.30 in the afternoon. I'm sitting at the drive-thru and nobody's talking to me. And a guy came up the back door and jumped on his bike and he goes, hey, we're not open. Huh. We're closed at 2 o'clock now. we got no help. Oh, wow. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's oh, really wow. common in restaurants. Yeah. Well, that would suck to own a, a business. And know you've got people that want to buy stuff from you and you oh, can't yeah. even keep it open. Yeah. Mm hmm Weird times. If you'd have told me two years ago all this craziness would be happening, I'd have gone the other Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah. Look it up. I was just reading that sign. Oh. So, so nervous. Yep. Slate. Football slate. There were three slates. There was a football. Uh, Briar. Briar, and then the third one is about which one I was just thinking of. Just south there is the town. We're out of those three slates. Every time they run into one, the grade got a little better by our north, so we give them hope. Uh, it was over four years to make any money at all. Yeah. And they kept going into something like that, and it was a little higher, and we got to get close. I kept them going. All right, guys, I'd like to thank you for coming. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. Now we'll get back inside. You put your jacket back kind of where I grabbed it, and the helmet, I'd appreciate it. Have a nice day. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. You guys got the best tour so far, just four of them. Yeah. <laughs> the first two, like I said, I had 28 on here and 20 of them were screaming kids. So oh, I feel crazy. Nice way uh -huh. to start the day. I'm very crazy. There we go. Probably plenty. I, yeah, I think we can just go in. Huh? Some nine of those over here. So old school like bites.
Awesome. Ready? Sure. All right, so that concludes the tour of the Iron Mountain Iron Mine. Um, if you're in the Vulcan, Mich Michigan area, I, I urge you to go and, and experience for yourself. You really can't understand how amazing it is and, unless you're standing right there in those spots. and walking those walking the same path that those miners did uh, day in and day out 12 hours a day risking life and limb um, risking getting pneumonia and black lung and and all the hardships they endured for essentially a life of well in some ways slavery they were never going to pay off the company store debt they were always going to owe them the pay that they were getting, you know, 18 cents at best an hour was never going to pay for all of their needs. So they pretty much worked themselves into debt the longer, the longer that they were in there until um, practices came in to change all of that. Um, probably well after those, a lot of those iron mines already had closed. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. And um, like I said, if you ever get a chance to go to Vulcan, Michigan, um, Iron Mountain Iron Mines, go visit go see it it's an amazing tour um breathtaking views inside and i'll see you next time